And this episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board podcast is going to be a little bit different. I am going to share clips and just brief snippets of two interviews that I had over the last month with um, Casey Wallace and Gigi Jackson. I had been able to attend a couple of their workouts, really a lot of them with, with Gigi. I've probably been to maybe 10 of his workouts. I was only able to catch one of Kaysen's workouts before he went to Miami to train. But in this episode, I sit down, interview with two prospects that I believe should be selected in the lottery. Obviously, Kaysen is probably more so of a lock, but I definitely would take him. GG in the lottery so here's an opportunity for you to get a chance to know them find out what they're working on and um, yeah stay tuned big shout out to each and every person that has made the locked on nba big board podcast your first listen of the day i'm your host rafael barlow the director of scouting for NBA Big Board, and I'm excited about this particular episode. I've been sitting on this footage for a while. I'm planning on doing a, a vlogumentary that's covering my travels and my journey as an independent draft scout. I planned on having it out a little bit earlier, but I've been I've been swamped and backed up with this NTX Combine that was last week, the week before the Combine. I was helping just... As far as just the logistics, making sure the players were coming, speaking with their agents, making sure that their flights were coordinated. It was very busy. Then I was also doing all the content on social media for it. So the last two weeks have been super busy, but I still plan on releasing this vlogumentary. I may do it after the combine since I'll be in Chicago for the combine. So we'll, we'll see. But here is a few interviews, just two. I had one with Keontae George hasn't been um, I guess I haven't had the green light to release it yet so hopefully um, that that will be pretty soon but first I, I want to put it into context about Casey Wallace so 2000 I want to say 2014-15 I was a struggling videographer trying to just make a few quick bucks here and there filming games i have filmed some nba players before but an opportunity came up to make some money to film a team called the d1 shooters and they were an elite team of fourth or fifth graders that were playing in the dallas area so a friend of mine matt steffi had this team wanted me to film their games and he kept telling me these guys are going to be really good these guys are going to be good. So I started filming their games. And little did I know that this team would have a projected lottery pick. Case and Wallace was on the team. And what's crazy is looking back at the footage, and even back then, Case was not the best player on the team. I did um, want to get into scouting. And I had little notes in my phone about guys that really stood out and caught my attention. And Kaysen was a guy that I, I thought he was like a connective tissue. He was like a Lamar Odom type. I mean, this is like when he's in fifth grade. He rebounded. He passed the ball. He defended. He did a little bit of everything. But he did not shoot the ball. Like, he never, ever shot the ball. So the first question that I, I asked Kaysen was about his, his lack of shooting at the time. And what's funny is... I've known Kaysen's dad for a while. I know his older brother, Keaton. And obviously, Kaysen was a fourth grader. So <laughs> he didn't remember me. He he did not remember me at all when I, I did this interview. I know his cousin, Terrell, his trainer. I know, I know all of them well. Kaysen didn't remember me. And I was talking to my brother who was at the, when I, at the workout when I was filming. And he's closer to, to Kaysen and his brother. They I guess they played basketball together. And he was like, uh, yeah. You got Kaysen to talk. He's like, I've known him since he was a little kid. I've never heard him talk. So Kaysen is a, a man of very few words. So I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that he sat down and, and did this interview with me. All right. So so here's the first question I asked Kaysen. And he goes into a little bit of detail on why he was not allowed to shoot jumpers as a kid. Back then when I started, I was a big man. So my dad didn't really want me shooting threes till 
about like the sixth grade. So now it's just like, just, you know, I'm a guard now, so I got to have a shot. I got to be able to break my man down and get my shot off and make it consistently. So there's been a lot of chatter on social media about Casey Wallace as a guy that is close to being complete and not having the same upside or promise or ceiling as some of the other players in this class. So I wanted to ask him his thoughts about about not being considered a high ceiling prospect. And I wanted to get his thoughts about what he's looking to show NBA teams and GMs and scouts in the pre-draft process. Um, I haven't been hearing people talk about my upside much because, like, I'm not big into social media and, you know, I got a tight circle. So I'm just putting in the work that I know that I need to work on and what other coaches or scouts want to see. Uh, part of my game that I haven't showed that much was, you know, I'm a scorer too. Like, I can break my man down and get a bucket when, it, when it's needed. So I've gone on record as comparing Kaysen Wallace to a smaller version of Kawhi Leonard. Both guys are, are really quiet and, you know, don't do a whole lot of talking, can change and dominate games on the defensive end. And Kawhi, like Kaysen, or Kaysen, like Kawhi, likes to shoot mid-range pull-up jumpers. And this season, Kaysen shot 59% on pull-up jumpers inside of 17 feet. So I wanted to get his, his thoughts on the mid-range shot and also, like, some of the biggest misconceptions about him and his game. Uh, I don't know why people don't like the mid-range shot. I love it. You know, it's a consistent shot I can make. It's, you know, people like to shoot threes and, you know, deep threes. But twos, I mean, it's an easier shot and it's more, you know, a more makeable shot. It's closer. You know, if the floater isn't there, you got a nice pull up. Biggest misconception is, you know, I'm not only a defender. You know, I can also get buckets, but I can't lock you up if I want to. And speaking of defense and Kawhi, and I, I can go back to when I was filming him when he was a, a youngster. He's He was always a good defender, so I, I wanted to pick his brain about defense and what is it about defense that he enjoys because there are a lot of guys who are offense first and, and they could care less about defense, but Kaysen is a guy that really loves to play defense, so I just wanted to pick his brain on defense? Uh, when I noticed I was a great defender was, you know, my whole life. I mean, <laughs> my dad instilled into me at a young age that defense is a will to want to. So ever since he told me that, I took pride in, you know, guarding the best player and, you know, stopping them from scoring. So Kentucky guards have a track record of outplaying where they were drafted from Tyrese Maxey to Jamal Murray to Tyler Hero, Devin Booker, the name goes on. And I think Kaysen could be part of that group. If he falls, I mean, I, I think that he should be a top a top 10 pick at the minimum. But if he falls, um, I, I think that he could be the next Kentucky guard that outperforms where he's drafted. So I wanted to allow him to tell a little bit about his freshman season at Kentucky and then also going back to the, the pre-draft process, what is he doing on this pre-draft process? What is his pre-draft process like? Uh, my experience at Kentucky was great. You know, I had great teammates. It was a great coaching staff. Uh, we had a lot of ups and downs, but I feel like that made the season even more fun to be a part of. Uh, in this pre-draft process, I mean, I'm just working on everything, every bit of, every single piece of my game, whether it's getting stronger, getting quicker with the handle, you know, getting more range on my shot. Like, there's nothing that I won't try to get better at. If you're looking to build a championship team, then you know it's all about making sure every player is a perfect fit. It's the same when it comes to your vehicle. Every part needs to fit just right. So the next time you need parts and accessories, head to eBay Motors. With eBay Guarantee Fit, you can be sure every part you need fits right the first time around. Just add your ride to my garage and look for the green check to know what part will fit or you will get your moolah back. Because just like in sports, confidence is the name of the game. And when you shop on eBay Motors, you can be confident. With over 122 million parts to choose from, you'll be back in the game in no time. After all, it's very easy to bring home a win when the right parts are guaranteed. So get the right parts, the right fit, and the right prices on ebaymotors.com. Let's ride. The eBay Guarantee Fit is only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. 
big, big shout out to each and every person that has made the Locked On NBA Big Board Podcast your first listen of the day. And on tomorrow's show, me and my co-host Leaf Tulane, we are going to discuss the players that we are looking forward to seeing the most at the G League Elite Combine that is taking place this weekend. I would love to go, but it is Mother's Day weekend and I have a son that is less than a year old. I would I would absolutely be a bad father and husband. Well, in my opinion, no disrespect to the guys that are going, but I would in my opinion, I would be a bad father and husband if I miss my wife's first Mother's Day. So I will not be in attendance at the G League Elite Camp this weekend, but I will be in Chicago on Monday and I'll be watching the EYBL on Saturday. But anyway, long story short, tomorrow's episode of the Locked On NBA Big Board podcast, me and Leaf will be discussing the players that we are looking forward to seeing the most at the G League Elite Combine. So like I mentioned, I filmed Kaysen back when he was in fourth or fifth grade. I want to say it was either 2014 or 2015. And when I was going back and looking at the film of the games, I didn't realize how many guys that are in this draft class that were in the old footage. I seen Keontae George, uh, Mark Mitchell from Duke is in the footage. Uh, I had an interview with Keontae, and Keontae mentioned that Derek Whitehead is also in, in some of the footage was on his team. I believe I have some footage of Anthony Black. I mean, there's so many guys that I didn't realize I was I was filming when they, when they were when they were younger. So I asked Kaysen about just basketball in DFW. Best case scenario, Dallas could have five to seven, maybe even eight guys drafted in June's draft from Kaysen Wallace to Anthony Black to Keontae George, Jordan Walsh, Marcus Sasser, um, I'm probably forgetting some Jalen Wilson. You can throw Drew Timmy in that mix. So there are a lot of guys in Dallas that I believe will be in this 2023 NBA draft class. So I wanted to ask Kaysen about growing up and playing basketball in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Dallas basketball is so great because like we have so much talent and we play against each other for years and we just keep making each other better, keep making each other better. And then the, the uh, younger guys, the class that's under us, we're playing against them because they're playing up against us. So I feel like we just keep, it will never fall off. We, like every generation just keeps helping each other out. Kaysen is a, a unique prospect in a sense that he's only had one trainer and that is his cousin Terrell Harris. I've known Terrell for years back when I worked for the Texas Legends. Terrell played for the Legends and prior to that he was on the Miami Heat when they won a championship. I don't, I don't know if it was the first or second one that LeBron and D-Wade and Bosh won, but Terrell was was on those teams. And just a good guy that I've known for, for years from just being in, in the Dallas basketball circle. So I asked Kaysen about his relationship with his cousin slash trainer who has been exactly where Kaysen is looking to go. And then, of course, I had to ask him about his brother Keaton, Keaton played for the Ontario Clippers, had a two-way at one point, someone that I've followed for years, um, just, you know, watching him play, and he has a great story in, in itself. So I asked Kaysen about growing up, playing against his older brother that is a, a good player himself. Uh, Terrell being my trainer is great for me. I mean, he's always been there for me. You know, he's my cousin, so whenever I need him, I could call him, you know, let's get in the gym late night, early mornings, like, we just always at it, and it don't always have to be basketball. I could talk to him about stuff outside of basketball as well. Uh, me and my brother Keaton, we always going at it, whether it's in a workout, we're competing, see who making more shots. You know, we used to play one on one in the backyard all the time, and you know, it made us both better. You know, me being a good defender it helped him work on his offense, and him being a scorer like he is, like he can score on pretty much anybody, helps me get better at defense. So we were just helping one another just get better all right last i just wanted to ask Kaysen about draft night what will that mean to to him and his family to shake i wanted to say david stern sorry to shake adam silver's hand on on draft night i know that's a, a feeling that you know only about 30 guys a year get to experience so i wanted to ask Kaysen about that uh shaking the commissioner's hand on draft night is a huge thing to me you know get to be up there with my brother in the league so you know, it's a lot of 
emotion that'll come with that. The next prospect that I sat down and did an interview with is Gigi Jackson. If you're a stranger to the podcast, I am a huge Gigi Jackson fan. I'm probably <laughs> the, the guy that has him ranked or projected to go the highest. I shouldn't say projected, but he's the guy that I, I have in my top five. And I'm a big Gigi Jackson fan. So this was pretty cool getting a chance to know him and get to speak with him. I've probably been to... I don't know, maybe 10, maybe even 15 of his workouts. I've got a chance to meet like his, his family and his support system. Gigi is a, he, he's a lot of fun. He's a guy that has a great personality and very expressive, but also has like this youthfulness and no entitlement to him. I, mean, I, I just think that Gigi's going to really wow teams with his interview. So check out this interview with Gigi. And the first question I asked him was about his handle i mean he's 6'9 and he handles a ball like a, a wing there's some guards in his class that i feel like don't handle the ball as well as Gigi. so i wanted to go back and find out when he first started handling the ball and and then i wanted to ask him about his freshman year at south carolina it was a a season that made him one of the more polarizing prospects in this class but he also started the season at 17 years old was the youngest player maybe the youngest player in college basketball, but he was definitely the youngest NBA prospect in this class. And so I just wanted to get his overall thoughts on his freshman year at South Carolina and the adjustment going from a junior in high school to a freshman in the SEC. I first started handling the ball probably around uh, when I was first started playing basketball outdoors, so probably from like, age five and up. Like, I never really got to play against any competition, just being by yourself outside. But, you know, you tend to see see different people dribble. Like, I never used to watch TV, like basketball on the TV. So, like, I'll see my dad or a couple of my cousins do some dribbles, and they were all, like, taller guys that could sort of handle the ball. So just trying to mimic those uh, movements. And then when I first started playing in uh, rec league, like my fifth grade year, uh, Anytime I was off the court, I could do like a tween behind, look like Curry a little bit, but when I get on the court, I would be so scared to, to just do the move. So I kind of feel like growing in basketball, I had to just mold myself and just be more confident dribbling. So My freshman year at South Carolina was probably one of the biggest blessings uh, that's ever been bestowed upon me and my family. Um, it was super, super fun, very super dope. I got to meet a lot of people. And I, I guess that saying is true. You meet your real friends or your long lasting friends when you get to college. But I made sure to still, you know, know where home is and know where, my, where I came from and keep my homeboys in the loop or whatever. But, you know, I had a couple of ups and downs this year, but I feel like it all, it all molded me into the, the basketball player that I am today and uh, just being, being able to fight through adversity and uh, continue to perform at a high level. As I mentioned, he was a 17 year old when he started the season. So I asked him about like the disadvantages of entering college basketball so young. I mean, it is a huge jump going from your junior year in high school to the SEC, especially on a team where you have a, a, a prominent role. So I was asking him about some of the disadvantages. And then I wanted to know the biggest misconception about his game and him as a person. So Some disadvantages with that, uh, I was a little scared before I reclassed up and decided to go to South Carolina. Um, I felt like I wasn't going to be uh, as strong or as uh, fast, but definitely some disadvantages. Uh, I will say, I don't feel like, well, let me not say that. Uh, some people feel like I don't make the right basketball decision on the court a lot of times, but I just felt like in those moments, I had to try to put the team on my back for some reason, just having, you know, those expectations linger in the back of my head. But uh, definitely IQ with the game and just knowing how to play college basketball because you have to know a lot, like each level that you rise up in basketball. So, and I just had to, you know, continue to grow in that. And those older guys, I had a, a lot of older guys on the team that, uh, that would help mentor me and uh, especially Hayden Brown. Uh, he was one of the biggest mentors and leaders that I've ever played with. And uh, he definitely gave me a lot of confidence when getting to my spots or whatever and uh, making the right play. Uh, <laughs> the biggest uh, misconception uh, is definitely my attitude and my behavior. 
I know it might show a lot on the court sometimes, but I'm just a very competitive guy and I'm, I don't like to lose. You know, I'm pretty sure every basketball player say that, but that really irks my nerves a lot. But uh, I definitely had to learn that you can't really show that all the time. Being the kind of player that I am and wanting to reach the level that I want to reach, you kind of have to keep it contained in. And like once you get in the locker room, then you can like, you know, let it all out or whatever. But uh, I feel like that's definitely the, the biggest thing. And the next question is about the pre-draft process and what is he looking to show teams as he goes on interviews. I mentioned on NBA Big Board yesterday that he has five workouts so far. I mean, it's still early. Five workouts with teams, and the majority of the teams that have reached out to him about scheduling a workout are in the lottery. So that is definitely a good sign. So I wanted to ask him, what is he looking to show teams during this interview and pre-draft process? Going into pre-draft, I'm working on a lot of strengthening and uh, conditioning. Definitely a lot of ball handling. It was a lot of plays this year where it, it went off my foot just coming up the corridor. I lost it on the behind the back, so definitely just tighten up those things. And the biggest thing is getting more consistent. And uh, my trainer, Marseille, he always uh, says a carbon copy. Like you want to have a carbon copy with every shot, with every move you do to make it uh, look the same and feel the same. Um, I'm looking to show those, those very powerful men that I'm, uh, I'm capable of hanging with a lot of older guys, that I'm capable of being a very versatile player. Uh, I'm still working on the strength aspect because I, I feel like I'm going to have to bang down there with a, a couple bigger guys in the NBA, but also showing that uh, I'm a, a cool level player that can, like I said, fight through adversity and try to make those winning plays. I know that he wants to show teams what he can do, but there are a lot of critics on social media that are concerned about his inefficient numbers. He has a lot of doubters that, that think he is not worthy of being a, a lottery pick. Like I said, they always bring up the inefficient numbers. So I wanted to get Gigi's opinion on the, the doubters and the naysayers. I would say those people that have those doubts, it's going to be a lot of people that have doubts and a lot of people with high hopes. Um, early on in the year, I kind of let that get to me a little bit in my head. But, uh, you know, I know what's true to my game. And, uh, yeah, I, I took a lot of bad shots, and I'm not denying that. But uh, I felt like uh, I could get my shot off anytime I wanted in those situations. Even though it wasn't the smartest basketball move, I just felt comfortable doing it. But I feel like once I get uh, to that next level, and even now as I'm maturing with the game, I feel like all of that will smoothen out. I'm not saying every shot will be perfect, but uh, it'll definitely be like, as other people would say, more efficient. Next, I wanted to learn a little bit more about his support system. Um, he has a unique support system around him and also wanted to get a feel of what is a typical day like, especially for an 18-year-old that is away from home. He's in Dallas. He has a support system around him. But what is he doing every day as he prepares for really the biggest job interview of his life? <laughs> I feel like it's one of those questions that uh, you see on the overtime day in the lights, but uh, it's no cap in mind. So uh, I wake up at like 7.50 every morning, you know, shower, brush my teeth, wash my face. And uh, we, we roll over to the gym, get a workout in from 9 to 11-ish. Um, then between after, I mean, I'm sorry, 11.45, then after 11.45 to about 1.50, I have my break in between. And then on some days at one o'clock, I'll have physical therapy or just some stretching. And then at two o'clock, I, I lift to about three and do a lot of agility work. And that's pretty much it every day. Um, everyone that's here with me in Dallas uh, includes my father, uh, my manager, Darnell Bruce, uh, who I call my uncle. And then I got my trainer, uh, Marseille Brown. Like I mentioned, he has a very unique situation. And one of the things that makes this situation really unique is that his mom is his agent. His mom is certified as an NBA agent. And uh, just wanted to know how that came about. <laughs> like, how did he choose his mom as his agent? Did he interview different agents? So this is a, a, a pretty fun answer here. Um, my mom being my agent is probably the coolest, the coolest thing. Um, it was brought up first by my manager and me alone. I think we said it as a jokingly manner and then we was like, wait, that, that could be smart. Cause my mom, she's always been intelligent when it's come to taking tests or 
anything with a question, she's probably 75% prone to get it correct. So, uh, you know, we brought it up to her, and uh, she was a little hesitant, like, all right, me being his agent. And then uh, we finally convinced her to take the test, and she passed it first try. So uh, God is good on that. But um, she's definitely probably one of the stronger-minded people in my family. You know, obviously, I, I feel like my dad is the, you know, the head of the family, then it's my mom next. But uh, she's definitely, as far as, like, the brains of the operation, in my opinion, she knows, you know, how to save what deals you know to reach out with who looks a little shady who's not who you can trust in you know whatsoever and uh i feel like just bringing her into the picture allows me to also keep money flowing through the family once i start you know uh, the nba starts granting me with these uh checks or whatever so you know i don't have to give a family member a couple of dollars here a couple of dollars there it'll be like everybody will you know be living good so all right lastly same with Case, and I had to ask, draft day. What will it mean to be selected in the NBA draft? And I just wanted to hear his thoughts on that. Draft day is definitely going to mean a whole lot to me. I feel like that's going to be a very pivotal moment in my life, in my family's life. Uh, you know, I'm fortunate enough that, you know, I'm in a household with two parents. Uh, I have all of my grandparents and uh, all my family surrounding me. And uh, God has put me in the position to sort of elevate me and my family and uh, put us on a higher level, as you would say, or just a greater living uh, state. But uh, I'm going to try to keep my emotions in because I want to look cool. I don't want to mess up the suit or nothing like that. But it's, it's going to be so emotional. And like, I, I'm, I'm a little scared even now because I, I don't know how I'm going to like react to it. But uh, God has definitely been good to uh, me and my family. Uh, my dad has always been his dream to make it in professional sports, but uh, you know he battled through some injuries and stuff. My mom was a, a track star growing up in high school and all that, so I feel like I should be able to handle it well. But uh, you know I'm the first in the family, or the second actually, so uh, it should be interesting. Big shout out to each and every person that has made this Locked On NBA Big Board podcast your first listen of the day. Wanted to thank each and every person for for checking out this interview. I know that I had to go back and forth, but the questions in the interview part was more so for documentary. But I thought it would be pretty cool to um, to just uh, let you guys hear it here first. 